my review of Filmora version 9. The good, bad, and some shortcuts. Let me start by saying I've been using Wondershare Filmora since mid-2016. I really like the software for many reasons. Some I detailed in our video on the tools we use to make videos. There's a link in the description below. The main reason I like it is this. It does what I want it to do without much fuss. And still lets me innovate with green screen and other effects. Filmora 9 is different from version 8.7.5 that I've been using in so many different ways. I really can't describe them all. Some are major improvements. Some are minor changes. As I show you how I worked through some of these, I will point out where I think they got it right, where the pitfalls are, and some of the shortcuts I came up with to help with my workflow. Let's take a quick tour of the software and then I'll show you how I made a short video with this software. The menus have changed in many ways. After you get into the program by opening a file or starting a new project, the first thing to do is check the project settings. Here's where you'll set the frames per second and the video resolution for the project. This gives you more control over this than previous versions of the software and a lot more options. These settings will be for this project only. The preferences dialog is how the software will behave for all projects. Among many other things, this will tell you where it put files that it creates. While almost everything is accessible from the menu bar, the media library is the quick way to access what you need when you need it. The media icon will bring up all your media for this project as well as some sample colors and videos. You can also drag and drop your video clips, photos, audio clips, and more right here. The audio icon will bring up all of the music and sound effects that come as part of the software. This is also where you can import your own music and sound effects from other sources such as the YouTube audio library. These will be available to all projects that you do on this computer then. The next icon is titles and this is where you can use the hundreds of existing title and text tools of the software and modify them to fit your own style. The transitions icon brings up so many ways of transitioning between clips I can't imagine using all of them in one video. So I tend to use eight or so that I'll add to favorites for production work and play with the rest in special projects. Next is effects. What makes this so awesome is that now you can apply these to picture-in-picture -picture clips and much more. You couldn't do that previously. Beyond that, there are overlays for many different effects. Elements are graphics that provide action to what would otherwise be a very boring clip. I've used these in many of our videos to draw attention to something or to provide a visual cue to a scene. To the right of the media library is the preview window. This shows the video in the timeline or the selected clip from the media library. Below these is the toolbar. This gives easy access to many of the editing commands. These will change based on what has been selected. Below the toolbar is the timeline. This is where you assemble the media and effects for the project and make the edits as well. If you're like me, you have been building a library of clips to use over and over again in various videos. And version 8 gave you a place to keep these in the media library. Version 9 doesn't have that, but I'll show you the workaround that I found very useful and it's less cluttered in the library. So here's an example of building a video in Filmora 9. Start with a new project and confirm the project settings. I then create a folder in media under my project called Fast Load. This folder will have my standard intro and outro clips. I've already created a folder in Windows called the same thing that I just drag and drop into this media library folder. For other standard clips and effects that I've created outside of Filmora, I just create more folders named accordingly. This keeps these clips organized and I don't have to go looking for them each time. I like to have a background color for my titles and when I do picture in picture. So I select one of the sample colors and add it to the timeline. Then I can use this throughout the video. I can place it anywhere in the timeline and on any video track. The key here is that the lower number video track will be behind the higher number track. This is such an improvement over the older versions, but it does take some getting used to. Selecting what you want to edit can be done from the preview window 
or you can select from the timeline. The software also tracks the frame rate and resolution of the clips you use and gives you the option of matching it to the media like the older version did automatically or don't change it. This is cool because you may want to keep the frame rate that you set in the camera. Here you can see the power of the right mouse button menus. By right clicking on the clip in the timeline, you have all the tools for editing right there. In this case, the green screen automatically picked my green background and gave, and gave me choices on making adjustments. To split multiple clips at once, move the red line in the timeline to where you want to split the clips, then box around the clips you want to affect, and then just select split from the menu. Now let's add some motion to these rather static clips. In the properties of the clip, there's a tab for motion. Unlike the previous versions, motion can be added to any clip. Double click on the type of motion you want for the clip, and it's added. Workflow in this version is so much improved because of the right mouse button menus. At first, I was unsure of this, but as I use it more and more, I'm getting faster in my edits. And it's not just because I speeded up the clips. The controls for the green screen chroma key and the other controls give a lot of feedback. So you can actually see what changes you're making. Adding music or audio is as easy as before, but now there's so much more control and you can have as many as 100 audio tracks and 100 video tracks. This is cool. This version has controls for visually adjusting the fade in, fade out, and even establishing audio key frames. The audio key frames let you adjust the sound levels without splitting the audio clip. Moving clips around in the timeline is so easy now. Making adjustments to things is just a click, drag, and drop away. Adding transitions is easy as ever. So is adding effects such as overlays and elements. So after putting this video together using Filmora 9, I can say that it's well worth the time to upgrade and learn the new features and where they shifted things to make it better workflow. I didn't find any serious bugs yet. It's faster in display and in editing. And I have workarounds for the things that they changed that I really didn't want them to. So I'm going to be using it from now on. I'll let you know if I decide otherwise. Thanks for watching our video. If you like what you see, press the like button below and subscribe. And also, check out our other videos.